Hello, this is Sean Kelly, and uh, here is my interview with Luke Higginson about his science fiction comedy, Relax, I'm From the Future, uh, which uh, won Best Feature Film last year at the Blood and Snow Film Festival, and is now playing in limited release. I hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> okay, great. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Okay, so, um, start with... Um, your um, original idea for uh, Relax, I'm from the future. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, originally I made a short film in 2013. Uh, it's literally just a five minute short based around the sort of one joke idea of a time traveler who uh, didn't really have a plan, uh, which was something that I thought was funny. And uh, just made that with some friends uh, on a rooftop and uh, did did surprisingly well. People liked it. So I sort of tried to expand it into something uh, longer, which uh, took a while to figure out what that was going to look like, but then sort of became uh, a, a thing that I was able to filter my sort of various anxieties about the future into and, yeah. uh, and turned into what it is. Yeah. So what were some of the challenges of expanding from the original short film? Um, yeah, I think definitely figuring out what the film would be about, like what, what, like fundamentally not like less so plot and more so like why why turn a five minute joke into a feature film? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it really was for me to sort of, uh, uh, to, to use time travel to sort of like wrestle with and maybe make fun of the idea of, uh, uh, trying to live a life, uh, that mattered, uh, quote unquote mattered, uh, with some purpose mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the inherent, uh, difficulty of that and uh the sort of existential anxiety surrounding that but make it funny make it funny and silly so mm -hmm. that, that was sort of the the goal and that that was what the film turned into well i think uh, i uh, looked up the short film and i think one of the um connecting elements of it is the character of um percy so um how did that um character evolve when um julian richings came on board i mean i i uh i literally uh, made a when we were making the feature, I, I recorded a video of myself begging Julian Richings to be in the film because uh, I've been a fan of his since uh, I saw a hardcore logo in high school, and uh, he he very generously uh, uh, agreed to to come on board. And yeah, I mean, I think he inherently brings uh, a weight and a gravitas to that character, and sort of was was uh, uh, I'm I'm overjoyed that he that he played that character. I think it's it's it was very important to the film working. And there's uh, Reese Darby, who's best known for Flight of the Concord. So how did he come on board the film? And uh, did he uh, do any improvisation playing Casper? <laughs> yes, absolutely. We were incredibly lucky uh, to to get Reese. Uh, we 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 needed someone who would be very charismatic, very high energy, very likable. Mm -hmm. And as soon as his name came up, it was uh, uh, we we were unbelievably uh, thrilled that he that he wanted to do it. Um, and yeah. Uh, uh, we knew as soon as he came on board, we knew that we were going to have to make room uh, that we were going to want to make room for, for his improv. And we, we actually changed uh, some of the plan for how we were going to shoot the film to incorporate a second camera into some of the dialogue scenes so that we could make sure we captured uh, some of the, the, the gold that he would give us because he's mm -hmm. one of the best improv comedians in the world. So mm -hmm. you, you, you don't want to waste that. You want to take advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, so um, you might uh, say some of the specific examples of what he improved in the role. Sure. Um, uh, there's a scene, uh, actually a scene on the rooftop, which is a sort of an expanded version of the short film. Um, and uh, where he is talking to, to Percy, to Julian Richings character. And he's basically trying to convince him to, have a conversation and then jump off the roof <laughs> and that and and uh there there is sort of something that, that that's something that that only someone like reese could sort of deliver in the right way and he um he on one take specifically during the when he really had to get in there and we did it a few times and he did a great job he sort of read the lines as they were on the page and then was was good and funny 
And then he, w- I thought we, I thought we had it. I was like, okay, we got it. Let's move on. And Reese was like, I think I've got one more. I think I've got one more in me. And we, uh, we rolled for it. And in that take, he just improv like three great jokes within the stretch of one monologue. Uh, uh, one of which I had to cut, uh, but but two of which are are in the film, and they're some of the best jokes in the film. And it's just literally he just he was just hit hit with inspiration in that moment. It was just amazing to watch him just suddenly like lock in and 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 deliver. It was uh, it was very cool. Now, um, compared to other time travel films, uh, Relax on from the Future actually actually has some relatively simple rules. Like a, I think it's established that. The time travelers can only go to this one point in time. So, was this a conscious decision in the development of the story? Yeah, I, I, a lot of the time travel stuff in this movie was designed to uh, either uh, be sort of funny or to like directly do sort of the opposite of a thing that I had seen a bunch of times before. Yeah, I liked the idea of it. I didn't want anything like a time machine. I wanted sort of it to be weirdly limited, like a thing that you could take advantage of uh, quickly, but you'd have to sort of accept what it gave you. You'd have to accept where it would spit you out, accept that you couldn't go back again. Uh, and and sort of, I liked putting those sort of limitations on it. And uh, uh, a lot of the the rules that are there are there to sort of serve the serve the themes and serve the comedy, basically. And then there's like uh, the one character I forgot her name, um, whose j- job is just to police all the unauthorized time travels, and <laughs> she seems quite bored of Doris, it. Doris, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Doris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's starting to go a little squirrely. Yeah, she, she's been she's been at it a long time, it's getting a little lonely, starting to go go a little weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, after uh, relaxing from the future, what's uh, next for you? Uh, I've got a new script that uh, that I'm I'm working on right now that uh, my 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 producers at Wango Films are going to try and help me make. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, in indie film, it's always always an uphill battle. You're mm-hmm. always sort of uh, uh, working hard to to try and try and get uh, the next thing off the ground. But uh, I really hope I get to make it. I'm I'm happy with it. And then also uh, there's a, a TV show version of uh, Relax Him from the Future that that we've been working on and developing that I'm I'm excited about and I think uh, I think would be great if we got to make it. Hmm, cool. Would uh, Reese Darby be involved with that or not? <laughs> uh, he, he, he has right of first refusal. He's he's uh, he, he gets first offer. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I would. It's it's too early too early uh, stages for anyone to be officially attached, but. Uh, Re, re, the role is Reese's if he wants it. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, thanks. Thank you so much, yeah. Sean. Yeah.